Mike 3 X Ray Charlie Mike checking access through MB. Yeah, my name's Brian. I'm at the uh, CV cabin important services. How we ended up here, that is a deep story that. Um the first C B I got oh what would that be? Nineteen seventy seven, seventy eight, something like that. It was when AM came in. Convoy came out and then uh, brother saw it. Oh I'll well, have one of them. So he got one, and I think he did one transmission on his, and that was it, never again. He went to be in a radio amp. Uh, and funnily enough, the third guy that was on was a detective inspector, and um, he had an Australian set. You name it, we could get it, and we, we saw it. Home, fitted home bases, we did the lot. Um, and about 1981, it went legal, so. We stopped doing it because Woolworths was doing it, Dixon's were doing it, every corner shop was doing it. Didn't know what they were messing with. And then we got bored. So 1982, we bought the, when it did become legal, we bought the shop in Preston. Um, I was working for Sedan Atkinson Vehicles on Walton Summit at that time. Uh, 1990, uh, Sedan Atkinson got took over by Ivico. So that was the end of the job at Walton Summit. You're redundant, we don't want you. So I bought a, a little bus from a guy called Petrie who was on Exeter Services doing CB radio. Anyway, we've got it painted and stuff. And I came and saw the guy on Fortin Services and he said, yeah, no problem at all. Uh, bring the bus up, party at the bottom of the coach bays, uh, you'll be alright there, no problem at all. So I said, right, so we came on, that's how we started one four and six, that was uh, Valentine's Day 1990. So we've been on here ever since. We had the bus on here about four years. Uh, Boardman's used to be on here, in the, where the petrol station is now. They moved out. And I was again a bit fed up of driving this bus backwards and forwards because it had to go and park up and all the everything associated with it. So we knocked two offices together in Bowman to put the shop in the petrol station. Uh, so then I could get rid of the uh, the coach. We're in the garage for oh about five years, something like that, uh, and then it got condemned. <laughs> well, it's been built since 1965, about 1965. So the tanks were losing petrol and God knows what. So he said, you want that ship, Brian? Oh, God, again, I'm being evicted. So um, we got uh, a little porter cabin and operated in that while they, they ripped it down, put new tanks in it, did everything, rebuilt the petrol station. And then I got this cabin here and been here ever since. Every wagon you saw going up and down the road had a CB on. Uh, it's still relevant because it, it's an easy communication system. All you've got to do is buy the equipment, set it up properly and you're finished. A lot of farmers use them these days in the tractors. Heck of a lot. The wagon drivers still use them. Although they don't use them as they used to do. Like at one time you could go on channel 19 and you would never get on it because everybody was nattering. You know, these days channel 19 is very, very quiet because everybody is on their own company channels, if you will. Uh, like Sobat runs on 26, Dent runs on 25 and they tend to stay on that channel instead of going on 19. Um, taxi drivers use them as well. So a lot of people do still use them, yeah. But I've gone on to uh, ham radio stuff. I took my license and I went on very uh, gingerly. I'm a new radio, I'm like, oh, welcome, yeah, blah. And uh, I've been with them now about four years. They're making new modes of communication all the time. They start off with Morse, then they went to voice. And now they're on D-Star and uh, there's another one called Fusion. Well, this D-Star, you can put it in the car, and when you do get it working, you can talk worldwide with that. 
absolutely no problem um, and we are getting it working in the car slowly but surely uh, I came down from Lancaster, been to some friends of mine and I've travelled from Lancaster to Broughton and the radio was on D-Star and I was listening to two amateurs in New Zealand setting up D-Star like I'm talking to you just clear as a bell um, yeah we do get international uh, the one that sticks out in the mind is I had a Frenchman, Russian and Belgium in. Uh, the Russian wanted a, a burner, which he couldn't explain to me. But he could talk to the Belgian, and the Belgian could talk to the Frenchman, the Frenchman spoke English. So we had a three-way conversation about it. The cuddly toys up there, they're, uh, they've also been left and abandoned on uh, services, so we're, we're an orphanage as well at the same time. Oh, the skeleton, uh, I actually saw it on eBay and I thought that would be good for putting my business cards on. Uh, it's something different and I'm a great one for something different. It's like the other skeleton in the electric chair. Um, we go to Canada fairly regularly. Went out uh, one October, uh, coming up to Halloween, I went into a place called Canadian Tire. Um, and they had it for sale on the counter for five dollars. So you can't resist it. Mike 3 X-ray channel Mike checking out sir. 76 J U R are you there, John? 